Hey guys, I see this question asked a lot in the comment section since the finale came out. It's a really simple, straightforward answer, so let's get to it. Why did the Dark Troopers stop once Luke showed up? They're non-sentient beings, why would they be able to recognize if a Force user was nearby? Now before we get into the logical answer, I would have to say that Gideon implanted these troopers with some sort of a sensory mechanism that could feel Force users and Jedi. The look on his face kind of says it all, and at this point, the Empire is unbelievably terrified of the one who killed the Emperor, and to their knowledge, Darth Vader. When he realizes that Luke Skywalker is there, or a Jedi even is there, so far and few in between now in the galaxy, he looks like he's just about to crap his pants. And for this reason, I think he's done everything he could with these dark troopers to sense the M count level in a being. And also, this helps his cause with saving Grogu, finding Grogu, and bringing him back to his possession. Now, the most logical answer is that the 40 or so troopers that I counted, of which only a few were in the hallway, could hear that Luke was already busting up the ones in the docking bay when he landed. They either heard him, or the ones who were getting diced up sent a signal to the rest to be prepared. Now, my theory is that they were programmed to go after the greatest threat in the area. Once Luke showed up, they either were primed to sense a being with high midichlorian levels, which I would imagine Moff Gideon had implemented into their programming and hardware, like a metal detector, only for Blood M count. Kind of like Dragon Ball Z's Scouter, but Star Wars. I mean, heck, if you got something extra in your blood like midichlorians, just like Qui-Gon was able to test Anakin's blood by sending it via a hologram almost, then it makes sense that all these decades later with new technology, maybe they'd be able to actually sense midichlorians from afar. You know, in a somewhat close proximity. Now the main change with these Phase 3 Dark Troopers and the ones from Legends are that these ones aren't lightsaber resistant. In Legends, their armor could take lightsaber slashes and nothing would happen to them. In this one, they got absolutely destroyed. Now there's a bit of a Legends story that I can spin on this. I don't believe this is true or anything, but it's interesting info nonetheless. In Legends, you could turn a dial on your lightsaber hilt to increase the strength of the blade, the power of the core. You could make it longer or shorter. Qui-Gon has this on his hilt. In fact, so do many lightsabers. I believe this is what Qui-Gon used during this scene to get through the doors to Newt Gunray. Anyways, it's possible that Luke switched a setting on his saber to deal more damage, take more power from his kyber crystal, but in turn, cause him to be slower. In the Legends game Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, you can actually change your lightsaber stance from blue to yellow to red. Blue yields low damage, but you wield your blade extremely fast. Yellow is medium, and red yields a super heavy blade that is devastating when clashed. Now I don't think Luke did that with these troopers, I think simply he just sliced through them like lightsabers would mostly do. However, I do have to take note that the Legends counterparts of Dark Troopers were much more tough and resistant to lightsabers, but they were also less maneuverable at least it seems, than these guys. Luke using his green blade was amazing, and it made the little kid in me return again. Now in my breakdown closer to the end of the 16 minute mark, I talk about Luke's lightsaber fighting style. If you missed it and you didn't make it to that part of the video, I will put it here now, and if you saw that part, well, then you can skip this if you wanted. Luke Skywalker arrives and makes the Dark Troopers look like absolutely nothing. He wasn't even moving fast, or even looked like he was really trying. It was easy work for a Jedi Knight like him, or at this point, should I say Jedi Master, ready to rebuild his roster of students. Also how Moff Gideon tries to kill himself once he realizes that Luke Skywalker has arrived. This is the amount of legendary fear that Luke has struck into the Empire. They all know what he did. He is a legend, a myth, and a nightmare. We see a cloaked figure walk through the halls. His movements and lightsaber form very much like Luke Skywalker from Episode 6, albeit a little bit improved. Luke used a variation of different lightsaber forms with the different teachers that he had mainly Form 4 Ataru which he learned from Master Yoda. However, when he used his emotions to fight his father on the second Death Star in Return of the Jedi, he was using more Form 5, Dem So, which was Anakin's lightsaber form. He also learned a bit of Form 3, Sorsu, from Obi-Wan Kenobi in Episode 4. This helps with blocking blaster bolts. Form 4, Yoda's, is more so for acrobatics a little bit. For example, in Episode 5, when Luke jumped out of the Carbonite freezing chamber, this could be an example of that. Or you can just say it's Force Jump. 
And Form 5 is known more for being on the offense, being a little more aggressive, which is very Anakin. Now there's a scene here where Luke uses the same move as Anakin against the B-1 battle droid on Mustafar, with the blaster bolt behind the back, deflecting it. Luke comes to the hallway which was a lot like his father against the rebels in Rogue One. Grogu just watches the screen amused. Luke Skywalker dances with his emerald blade, blocking bolts and slicing through the troopers. He uses force pull, force push, force freeze, topped off with force crush. Now, this is huge, because Force Crush was a force power that was a big no-no for Jedi. However, there was a gray area when using it on droids, or any non-living being. Mace Windu and Anakin Skywalker both used this in the original 2D Clone Wars back in 2003, I believe it was. Mace uses it on Grievous, which is why he always coughs, and Anakin uses it on Nelvan against the scientist Techno Union guy. So Luke using this on a droid, it's not really too bad, but also, he's really the only one controlling the Jedi at this point. He's the one to carry on the mantle and teach his way of being a Jedi, which is the better way. At least it is in Legends. The droids and danger have been eliminated by Luke Skywalker. Like most Jedi before and after him, Luke used a force ability known as Force Speed in order to seriously enhance his dueling abilities. We saw this ability most clearly in the opening scene of The Phantom Menace as Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan ran down the hall in the droid control ship at double speed. Luke took a different approach to this power and used it to slow down things to half speed around him. With the help of the Force Ghost of Obi-Wan, Luke learned how to seemingly slow down time for himself in a fight, giving himself more time to react to his opponent's movement. This became an incredibly useful skill for Luke, leading him to win every single lightsaber fight after he learned the skill. So this ability combined with the force speed made him a complete dueling legend. Now if Anakin were actually there in place of Luke fighting the dark troopers, I think things would have pretty much gone just about the same. Luke at this point is a Jedi master in his own right, and he's really the only one left in the galaxy that we know of at least. And to be honest, he's the son of Anakin, he's the son of Vader, who really is going to defy him now, or tell him that he can't do something. When he used Force Crush, as I explained in the breakdown, that's kind of a no-no force power you use as a Jedi. So this is also showing that Luke has now sort of transitioned into this different echelon of Jedi. He's now calling upon the Force and letting the Force guide him more so than abstaining and being constricted by these very dogmatic rules. Rather, Luke uses the Force and he dictates what the purpose of using this power is, whether it's for good or evil. And I think that's something that really makes Luke Skywalker stand out, especially in this scene, and shows his overall character arc and how he's developing as a Jedi Master. That's pretty much all I wanted to say about Luke and everything that we noticed with him as he fought the Dark Troopers. Let me know what you think about Luke and Anakin's moves in tandem, and how he moves a lot like his father used to. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can see everything else from the breakdown in the breakdown video, and of course, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Until the next video, remember, the Force will be with you, always.